Come on, everybody, lift your hand, lift your hand, and just bless the name of the Lord this morning. Oh, Lord, we just thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We are a prosperous nation, we are a prosperous people. Andre de Boso Kotorobo Shatagara, the Kadaraba, we give you praise, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Before you sit down, help me tell two or three people I can never be poor. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, show me the money. Glory to God. All right, take your seat, take your seat, everybody. We're going to go into it. So today... uh, this is the second part of the series we started last week. I'm so excited about this series because I feel it's something very necessary with what people are going through right now and the world, really, but particularly in, in our country, Nigeria. But people all over the world are feeling the financial crunch. As a matter of fact, um, most of you know um, I'm Pastor Mildred. We travel a lot. We travel a lot. <laughs> I don't know anybody, any minister that travels as much as us. I know they, they might be, but I don't know them. You know, um, <laughs> we, we, we travel, man. We travel a lot to preach. And um, in, in all our traveling, one of the things I'm beginning to see as I've traveled around the world, one of the things I'm beginning to see is that a lot of Christians are broke. A lot of Christians are broke. And, and, and I and my wife have agreed and decided that we're going to bring out a set of teachings, a manual and course or courses for believers. Because we believe every Christian family can be rich. That's what we believe. From God's word. It's not just um, talking. It's from God's word. So we believe that if they can put one or two things in place, every Christian family can be rich. And every Christian family should be rich. Because poverty is such a danger. We said that last week for those that were here last week. If you missed last week, go and watch it. And don't be missing service. This is not a series to miss. So poverty, we, 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 we believe, we began to see that churches, a lot of churches are struggling financially. A lot of churches are struggling financially. And we want to help believers around the world. Because poverty has a way of shaking your core. You can't serve God as freely as you want. There are people that can't go to church because they have to work. Some can't even afford to go to church. Because of money and lack of funds. So we're very passionate about this, guys. And um, we, we believe and decree that you will be the first beneficiary of it in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Today we're going to be looking at the differences between the Elijah model and the Elisha model. Elijah model and the Elisha model. Okay? Before we go into that, quick recap from last week. How many people remember the five stages of money that people can be in? The five stages. Who remembers? What's number one? No, no, you're not sounding like you're sure. What's number one? Poor. Some people are poor. And we said poverty is not a state, but a mindset. Number two is what? Broke. Some people are broke. And amongst all five, four of them... Can be broke. Can be broke. Because broke, being broke is a temporary state of not being liquid. So sometimes a poor person can be broke. He's broke all the time. A, 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 the next person can, the rich person can also be broke because of investments and things he has done with his money. So being broke is a temporary state of not having liquidity. Third stage is where you are comfortable. All right? Third stage is what? Comfortable. This person's expenses and income are always in close. Uh, fellowship. <laughs> so he has a lot of things, but he also doesn't have liquidity. He has things, but no liquidity. The first stage is who? I can't hear you. First stage is who? Rich. These are good guys. These guys have loose change left after they take care of all their basic needs. After they pay for their car, their house, school fees, buy clothes. These guys buy clothes every month. <laughs> I like rich people. I like rich people. Uh, they look it. They look it. <laughs> Whenever I travel all over the world, I see rich people. Uh, every, everything they wear, everything they carry has label. LV, Gucci, uh, 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 Bal- 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 is it Balenciaga or Balenciaga? 
Everything is label. Everything, you know, Google Boss. They, they like designer label. <laughs> Rich people. Everything, the badge. The Gucci, even Gucci himself can't wear that Gucci. Gucci, the forehead, the stamp Gucci. <laughs> they like designer labels so much. Ah, if you are not careful, you can drop quickly from the rich. But I like the wealthy. That's where I belong. That's the that's the class where I belong. <laughs> the wealthy you usually can't tell when you see them among any of these four people. You can't tell they are the wealthy. Their car sometimes is not standing out. Their clothes is not standing out. They dress normal. They, everything looks normal. The places where you will know they have money is their house, for instance. The area they live. They don't like noise. So they just go to Southwest Koi. You know, just go to Bodylon. <laughs> if you know, you know. Okay, so, uh, you know what I'm saying. So, um, <laughs> praise God. So, but the, the welding um, at a lost degree. So, we, we did that in detail last week. So, please. Go listen to it if you didn't get it. So let's dive into today. So, again, who can remember? I said there's one word that is going to run through all through this month that determines your prosperity. It's a four-letter word. Who can remember what that word is? No, say it loudly. What's that word? Your soul. Your soul. S-O-U-L. So we established last week, taught John 2, that you prosper Equally as your soul prospers. Equally as your soul prospers. So the first thing we said is having a prosperous soul. Prosperous soul. We dealt with that. Today, we're going to look at Proverbs 13, I think. So, like I said... All through, we're going to look at the kind of, is your soul. Is your soul that determines your prosperity. Your soul is made up of your will, your emotions, and your thoughts. That's what is made up of your soul. So it's an internal thing. Prosperity is from inside out. From inside out. It's your soul. And we said, wherever you are right now is a representation of your soul. No argument. It's just where your soul is. And all you need to do is to beef up your soul, work on your soul. It will produce a different result. So look at this one now. Today, we're looking at another kind of soul. He said, the soul of the sluggard. So, there is the soul. You see what I'm saying? This is important, guys. He said, the soul. I tell you, the soul is where the problem is. Nigeria is not your problem. Dollar rate is not your problem. The economic news is not your problem. Uh, inflation rate, un- unemployment rate, dollar rate, all those things are not your problem. The governor, the president, they are not your problem. The problem is the soul. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He said, the soul... Of the sluggard, desire it, and had nothing. But he said, the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Is the soul. Is the soul. Is There's a soul of the sluggard. That's the lazy. Then there's the soul of the diligent. So today we're looking at the diligent soul. If you must be made fat... Your soul must be diligent. That's your thinking, your will, your emotions must be diligent. No food for lazy man. There is no anointing oil that can make you rich if you have, if you have the soul of a sluggard. No miracle prayer can make you rich if you have the soul of a sluggard, sir. Let's stop deceiving people. Too many lazy souls can pray from now to 100 years, sir. This thing is so crucial. That's why people that are not Christians also can prosper. Because it's an issue of the soul. They too have soul. Once their soul is right, even though they don't know God yet, they can still prosper. It doesn't mean they'll go to heaven. They will still go to hell. They're not born again. But their soul can be prosperous. And you can be born again, heaven bound, tongue talking, hallelujah, shouting, Bible carrying, church attending, self fellowship leading, and be broke. Some of the brokest people in this country are Christians. So let's get it closer. It's an issue of the soul. They say the soul of the sluggard likes big, big things. <laughs> 
you sit down, you now browse different cars, browse different phone, browse different laptop, different expense, browse different shoe. <laughs> we should browse different jobs, jobs, jobs. The soul of the sluggard has desire. Desire. He's on Instagram checking people, what people watch, people are wearing, what shoe people are wearing. He's on his, he's checking the soul of the sluggard. He desired it. He said, but he had nothing. He said, but the soul of the diligent. So there, there's something called the soul of the diligent. That means a lifestyle and a mindset of diligence. What does this mean? It means it's a lifestyle and a mindset of value. He's able to add value. He's not thinking of getting things. He's thinking of getting value. See, there are two different mindsets. And unfortunately for us, we are raising Christians that have, that have miracle mindset, that have God do it for me mindset, instead of people that have value mindset. The people with value mindset will always be richer than those that have miracle mindset. That I told you last week. There's a difference between financial miracle and financial prosperity. Most people, most Christians I know, have a financial miracle mindset. So they will always be broke. Because unbelievers don't expect miracles, they by default have to have a prosperity mindset, value mindset. So they will always be richer, except we change our thinking. One is thinking of value, the other is thinking of a miracle. That's the difference between the Elijah model and the Elisha model. If you're thinking about miracles, let me tell you now, in your lifetime, maybe you have one or two or three miracles, financial miracles, your whole lifetime. Those miracles are meant for you to use wisely so that you will never need another miracle. But the Christians I see around me, want to perpetually live on financial... This world does not run on miracles. Even though miracles happen all the time. But it's not run on miracles. Oh, Mary got pregnant without anybody. She conceived a child. Is that how anybody... Do you, have you met since that time? Has any other person given birth to start uh, marrying a man? That's not how the world runs. It doesn't mean miracles don't happen. But the world doesn't run on miracles. It runs on principles. So the slow God is waiting for a miracle all the time. He desire it. Desire it from God. Oh God. Oh God. Desire it from God. It's the mindless, it's the mindless practices that I see in the body of Christ today. Very mindless. God will make you a billionaire. How? 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 If they dash you one billion, won't you run mad? If you're not doing anything with it. You know, you don't have anything to do with it. Since I've been a pastor, close to 30 years now, nobody has dashed me money in my whole life. Nobody has dashed me money. I cannot lie for you. However, people that have been blessed by my teaching or ministry have given me seed. There's a big difference. I'm not a random person that they met on the road and dashed money. They passed many people that were random, they didn't know, to me, that have blessed them. If I, would, if I never preached, if my messages never blessed them, they would never have given me one naira. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's from work. Money answers to value. To value. You can have as much money as you want if you can give as much value as people need. I'll say that again. You can have as much money as you want if you are willing to give as much value as people need. There's no limit to how much you can have. Ask the Bill Gates and the Mark Zuckerberg and co of this world. If you can meet the needs of people, all your own financial goals will be met. But praying and fasting for money is a sure way to remain poor. And this is what I see poor people do all the time. All the time. Instead of reading books and learning and sharpening their skills, they are praying and shouting, God, come and bring money. Hunger. Hunger. You know Iya. Do you know Iya? <laughs> oh, God. Free Africa. Free Africa. In the name of Jesus. 
we have been operating the Elijah model in churches instead of the Elisha model. What's the difference between the two? Elijah, when they introduce him, they say it's Elijah of Tishbite. Statistically, no father, no mother. <laughs> it's assumed that he just appeared from nowhere and also disappeared. Remember he didn't die? He disappeared. Oh, the chariots carried him. So they assumed that's how he came. No structure. That's what that means. If you were never born, it means you have no structure. You don't understand growth. No understanding of growth. He just appeared, probably by a chariot, and he left by chariots, I suspect. No structure. But Elisha was a very different man. When Elisha was introduced, he was introduced as the child of somebody. Structure. <laughs> Because when you have parents, it means they've, they've, you've done homework, they've told you this is your coffee, this is time to sleep. So Elisha understood structure. Elijah came by chariot, by fire, by force. That's how Elijah came. <laughs> ah, is somebody catching what I'm saying this morning? Elijah came by chariot. Elisha came from a family structure. Father, mother, greet your mother in the morning, junior, greet, wash dishes. He understood structure. So they, that's why historically, biblically, they showed us that Elisha did more miracles than Elijah. His ministry outlasted, lasted more than Elijah's own. See the two of them, when they were going to help a widow, or two of them helped widows, Elijah met the widow and said, give me your last food. <laughs> by fire, by force. He said, give me your last food and your food shall be sustained. <laughs> Only problem is that after that famine, after all that issue, that woman will remain poor because financial miracles don't last. Financial miracles don't last. Nobody can dash you an amount of money that will sustain you for the rest of your life. Nobody. I've never seen anybody that they dash money. And that was the money he used for the whole rest of their life. So the challenge with Elijah model is that yes, giving and receiving is a part of the covenant, of course. But it's not the key to sustainable financial prosperity. It's an addition to what you're doing. He said, God will bless the work of your hands. Very important. So, he said, give me your last food. Yes. Financial breakthrough seed. Yes, it's good. I believe it's seed. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> but when that man of God goes, hunger, when that season passes, hunger will beat you. But see, Elisha, a widow came. Same kind of similar situation. We don't have anything. They are going to carry my children as collateral. No money. My husband died leaving us in debt. What man of God help us? Elisha said, what do you have in your house? Ah, different approach altogether. He said, what do you have in your house? <laughs> the woman said nothing. He said, then your hunger will kill you. Think. Elisha, mother, will force you to think. Elijah will just do a miracle to you and you'll be stranded when he's taken up in a chariot. You'll be stronger, will beat you when he goes. Elijah will leave you better than where he met you. <laughs> Elijah will leave you where he met you. Because hunger will beat you when he's gone. Elijah forced that woman to think because he, she's a Nigerian Christian, mindless Christian. Just shout. God do it. He said, no, you will do it, madam. What do you have in your house? She said, nothing, then you will die. She said, oh, okay, I remember. Only a small cruise of oil. He said, that's what we need. Because you can't get something out of nothing. We need something God can bless. I watched, I was, I think I posted a video about David and Goliath or something. I can't remember now. And somebody wrote under the video that David actually killed Goliath by the anointing. Ah! David killed Goliath by the anointing? At all! He killed Goliath with a slingshot. It was a skill he had developed. 
In fact, it wasn't the slingshot that killed Goliath. It was the skill. Because if they give you that slingshot, you will kill yourself, not even Goliath. <laughs> you will shoot it to go back to your own soldier. <laughs> so it wasn't the slingshot that killed Goliath. It was the skill. Now, God anointed the skill. That's what God does. He anoints your skill. If you have no skill, there's nothing to anoint. Hunger will beat you, sir, in church. You're a very hungry, poor Christian. That's all you'll be. Shouting every day. That's what's going on in my country. Everybody shouts. Go and do the thing. The guy wrote, that is the anointing that killed Goliath. I said, not all. At all. If it's the anointing that killed Goliath, then David would have even used um, Saul's armor. Remember they gave David Saul's armor. He said, I'm not used to it. He said, I'm not skilled in this area. I'm not skilled in this area. I want to function in the area I'm skilled. They gave him Saul's armor. If you know anything about those days, Saul's armor was the best. The best. Heaviest sword, strongest armory, strongest helmet, everything the best. <laughs> he said, I can't use it. He said, let me use what I'm used to. Because if you have ever been in the bush, you know how it was when we were young. So this young generation won't know that. But when we were young, everybody, we used to have catapult. You practice on beds. Sometimes you break somebody's glass. All of you run. You don't stay. You break somebody's window. So you break somebody's glass. You do, you practice. So this David was practicing the slingshot. He had mastered it. He had mastered it. So when the Goliath came, he said, I will use what I have as a skill. And God blessed it. Same thing with Peter. Do you notice that Peter always prospered with fishing? Peter didn't prosper with another thing except fishing. That's where his gift or his skill was. God uses your skill. If you are skillless, hunger will beat you. There's nothing we can do. Maybe once in a while you get a financial miracle, but nobody lives on a financial miracle, sir. People live with financial prosperity. There's a difference. Prosperity is flowing. Financial miracle is a one-off. David, uh, Peter prospered only by fishing. When he was fishing and he caught nothing, Jesus appeared and said, so out of your profession, so out of your skill, both was part of his job. So he sold his last. The only thing he had left that had meaning was the boat. The net, they don't need net. The f- fish food, they don't need that one. Fish didn't come. The only thing of value on Peter was the boat. And Jesus said, give me out of your boat. But Jesus gave him Elisha mother. He caught fish. He didn't give him money. Caught fish. The fish was so much, he called his partners. They had their own, the two boats were sinking. After he caught that fish, Jesus, I want to promote you into ministry. He said, Let's, you, you were fishing fish before, but now I'll make you fishers of men. His destiny was tied to his skill, fishing. Even when they wanted to pay tax, he didn't tell Peter, go and do public speaking. He didn't tell Peter, go and sell clothes. He said, no, if God wants to bless you, he goes straight again to what you're skilled at. Don't play with your skill. I don't play with my skill. I don't play with things I can do. I don't want to wash cars. I don't want to cook food. I want to preach. I want to coach. I want to teach. That's where my skill is. Now, if I have to wash cars while I'm looking for a platform to preach, I'll wash cars. If I have to cook food while I'm looking for a opportunity to preach, I'll do that. But when I get a chance, I will do what I'm skilled at because God blesses the area of your skill. So don't want to pay tax. <laughs> Peter said, what are we going to do? They're going to arrest us. LRS will arrest us. What are we going to do? IRS will arrest us if you're in the U.S. What are we going to do? Jesus said, take your, your fishing equipment because he still had it. He still had it. He still had the skill. You see, your skill doesn't leave you at any age. He still had the skill. He said, go to, go to the water. Throw your hook or your net, whatever it is. He said, the first fish you catch. God blessed it, you see. There was supernatural in it, too, but there was a natural. God, he knew how to fish. He knew how to throw the net. That's why they didn't call John to go and catch fish. That's why they didn't call Bartholomew to go and catch fish. That's why they didn't call Matthew to go and catch fish. They won't catch any fish. He had to call Peter that could catch fish. But he said, no, I'm going to bless the fish. It won't be an ordinary fish. I pray for someone, and he understand my voice. Your skill will no longer be ordinary skill. In the name of Jesus, you will start earning a foreign currency for that skill. That same skill will start to end, open you international doors. In the name of Jesus. That's what God does. He opens the doors. He blesses you, but on your skill, not on your, open, not on your forehead. Not on your forehead. He say, God will bless your forehead. He will bless the work of your hands. So if I anoint your forehead, it's for fashion. The work of your hands is where the anointing is really going. 
not on the forehead of your head. So Peter went there, catch the, throw the first fish. First fish that came out there was money in his mouth. When Jesus died, when Jesus died, and there was pandemonium, pandem, pandemonium and, and all those, <laughs> everywhere, jaga jaga, you know, every, there was scat- what did Peter do? He said, I go a fishing. He said, look, if all else, else fails, my fishing skill will sustain me. I will not beg. He went back to fishing. And Jesus came and ate the fish. Oh. Jesus came and they made fish. He ate properly. <laughs> because that's Peter's skill. Is somebody getting what I'm saying, sir? Elisha model. Is financial prosperity Elijah? Is financial miracles? Financial miracles do, will not sustain you. That has been what the African church has been missing. Everybody sharing testimony of financial miracle. What I want to hear is a testimony of financial prosperity that I open three businesses. <laughs> then I know you have money next week and next year and next two years. Financial miracle. <laughs> I've been in church for a long time. Some of that financial miracle is a big mistake to announce your financial miracle. Come and share testimony. Brethren, pray, 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 pray. The Lord, somebody dash me uh, $50,000. Ah, you won't make it to the car park. Christians will start begging you. <laughs> Brother, my school fees, my child is dead. You need money to raise him up. My, they will be begging you to this for the next three years. Who will be begging you that money? You will be broke. You yourself will need a miracle by the time they're done with you. Your family members, they must not hear. They will, be be- they will, be- they will write you from village. They will finish your money. But if it's financial prosperity... It's flowing. So Elisha told that woman, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. He said, you must have something. He said, it's only a cruise of voice. He said, bring it. He said, take it. Go and get capital. Borrow capital. Borrow vessels, not a few. See, you see, Elisha had strategy. Strategy. Business strategy. Don't borrow too old. It will finish quickly. Borrow vessels, not a few. We don't know how many they borrowed, sir. We don't know how many borrows. He said, borrow from everywhere. Get vessels, not a few. He said, fill it with oil and start to sell. If you are not selling, <laughs> you are selling. <laughs> Is somebody getting that? If you are not selling, they are selling you. I hate when I go to any mall or store and I'm spending. Do you, I'm only happy if I'm also selling. If I'm only spending, I'm getting poorer. When I enter a mall and I'm, I'm, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying, you're getting poorer. If you're not selling something also, somewhere, you will get poor. He said, gather the vessels, fill it up, and begin to sell it. I have a guy, <laughs> he's one of the biggest sales coach from Africa at least, and he's global. His name is Paul Fo. I love the guy. Paul Fo. He talks about selling. Sell, sell, sell. You must sell. What are you selling? What are you selling? What are you selling? Package your gift to sell it. Package your talent to sell it. Package that product to sell it. That thing you are doing for free, start selling it. Sell it in a way that more people can use it. Package it in a way that more people can use it. Sell, sell, sell. How do you not like to sell? How do you not know how to sell? You must know how to sell. If you are not selling, you you won't be sustained. He said, put, the, put it in, get many vessels, fill it up, and sell. Look at this. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go and sell the oil. No, give me the verse. Well, let me read it. I like the story. Give me like from verse 5 or something. Quickly. So, so she went from him and shut the door, and her, her and her sons. Ah, that's, you see, when is financial prosperity? It's a family business. Hey, look, build something your children can eat from. Oh, somebody didn't hear what I said. I said, build something your children can eat from. That woman that they did miracle, Elijah did miracle, will our children eat from that one? Now it's gone. I should never hear of it. But this one, see, she shot the Elisha model. They shot the thing. She and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Next verse. He said, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me yet a vessel. They were in a family business. These children will learn, even after this woman is gone, this woman, these children know the business now. He said, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. 
and the oil stopped. In other words, what they will now do, now that they've sold, the, remember, I won't give me where they say they borrowed many vessels, not a few. When they, when they sell all the many vessels they have, the money they get from them, they will now go and buy from a supplier and now they, they have now started the oil, an oil business. Everybody now knows them as the dealers of oil in that town. Sustainable business. He said, go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Say, borrow not a few. Give me, where, give me where they say they sold it now. Go there. Quickly, DJ. He said, after they filled all the vessels, they went to sell it. Sing it verse 7 or something. Give me. He said, then she came and told the man of God, he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt and leave thou and thy children of the rest. You see Elisha's design. That woman will never need her again till she dies. Nigerian Christianity, the pastors are structured in a way that you can never live without them. You must come again for another prayer. You must come again for another uh, teaching. You must come again. You can never be free. This model, Elisha model, empowers you. Go and do it. Go and pray. Christian model is the disciples told Jesus, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Nigerian model. Pray for us as John prayed for his disciples. <laughs> and if I pray for you today, when you have need tomorrow, what will you do? You come again for another prayer. That the Elijah model only favors Elijah. Elijah gets rich. The disciples get poor. That's the Elijah model. You need Elijah every day. But the Elisha model, he said, you and your children, go and sell it and live off it. Where did Elisha get this mindset from? He grew up in a home. There was structure. Secondly, he was in the business before he entered ministry. I always love people that were working before they started ministry. They bring a certain level of gift. I hate, or not reason I hate, but I don't really fancy people that have not done anything in their life just from, from ministry. They will, see, they will see the church as their only survivor. They have not walked on the streets. No experience with life. That's why if you look at some of the greatest, greatest uh, uh, men of God we have, they have walk history, even outside before they entered ministry. He's bringing the experience from the workplace. Elisha was running a powerful business, family business probably, when they called him to ministry. Elijah, Elijah was saying, I'm not doing it again. So God said, go and anoint Elisha as your succession. So Elijah went, saw Elisha, threw his mantle on him. In those days, when, when that happens, it means, you know, your master is telling you it's time to follow me. So Elijah threw the mantle on Elisha, meaning follow me. But Elisha had sense. Elisha was a businessman. Elisha had structure. He didn't just follow him. Elijah wanted him to follow immediately. But Elisha said, I'm going to go back home and put structure to the business before I follow you. Hey, hey, may God raise more Elishas in our time. People don't understand systems and structures. You want to leave your department, you just carry your bag and travel, relocate. You want to leave your church, just travel. No, no structure, no system. As, they, as he threw the mantle on Elisha, Elisha said, in fact, the Bible said before then, Elisha was working with 12 oxen. In the, was plowing with 12 oxen. 12 oxen, that's, that's, that's a massive business. 12 oxen, that's a massive, look at it here. It says, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, I told you he had family, who was plowing with what? 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12, he was with the 12th one. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Next verse. He says, and he, and, he say, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said, on, Elijah said unto him, go back again for whatever. He said, if you don't follow me now, I'll be going. But Elisha said, look, I can't just leave my family and my business like that. See what he did next. He said, and he read, Elisha returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them. He did send forth. Not like all these rebellious children I'm seeing now. You leave a church, just leave. You leave a business, you, you, you slam the door. I'm going to get to that. You want to resign from your office, just slam the door. You insult your boss, insult everybody before you leave. You will surely come back begging. 
with that behavior. You are not living with grace. You are living with a curse. You want to leave a church, leave a business, leave an office? Leave well. They helped you. They, if they are so evil, why did you stay for one day? If they are so evil, you would have stayed. One of you stayed 12 years, 10 years, in a place, 8 years, 2 years. If they were evil, you would stay 2 years. At least that 2 years, they sustained your life. Don't slam the door. Live well. Make sure they bless you. Make sure they release you. Make sure they are happy as you are going. Do send forth. Don't just disappear. You are relocated. Just disappear. Your office is waiting for you. You are, you are at the airport. You will suffer in the land you are going, sir. Because you have no regard for relationships. Some of those people are going to meet them again in life. Life goes in a circle. You will meet them again. This life is too small. You will run into them. You will need their favor soon. Or you will need the favor of somebody that knows them. And they will ask that, ah, one of your boys is asking for something. <laughs> you say, don't touch that boy, he's a fool. He returned back from him. He took a yoke of oxen and he slew them. And he boiled their flesh with the instruments of oxen. And gave unto the people. He had to tell his staff. He directed everyone and said, you take over this business. You take over, I'm going to do ministry now. You guys take over. Make sure the clients are well taken care of. Send forth. He said, he boiled them again for the people. And they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered to him. He had structure in his life. Elijah had no structure. Just disappear. Enter chariot anytime you like. And just disappear. Confuse everybody when you go. <laughs> Elijah ran back. Called the people. Called his father and mother. They, must, they should bless you. They might not agree with your plan. But let them be aware. Don't act like a, like a, like a jugunu. You know jugunu. <laughs> Some of you don't know Jugunu. Don't act like a Django. Do you know Django? So, ah, this is an old, old movies you guys don't know about. You're not a cowboy. Behave well. You want to leave a church, just disappear from back door. <laughs> For somebody that has labored over you spiritually. That is spiritual ignoramus. You're walking somewhere. You just carry your bag and go. Then you start insulting them. That company, they're all useless. That office, they're all useless. <laughs> you'll, be the, you, 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 you'll be the first useless person. Let them know ahead of time. I might live in three months. Pray for me. Release me properly. That day, one day, you will own your own too. Because he that is faithful in another man's own, he shall be rewarded with his own. This is why many people can never own their own. Because the way they are running on that man's own, they can never, never own their own. Never be blessed. Haven't you seen many gifted people that never make it? Many skilled people that never make it? Because they are rascals. They are spiritual rascals. Haven't you seen talented music ministers that can never make it? Their voice is good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The voice is so nice. Ooh. Nobody, nobody bites. Nobody cares. Because he left his father. He left his mentor and started insulting them. Those are sure ways to say that Elisha understood relationship. I can go on and on about Elisha and Elijah model. Do you see, Elijah didn't like people. He didn't like human relations. He always going to the cave. Always going under the ground. Always go- Talk to human beings. Poor people. One of the things about poor people is that they, are, they have poor relational skills. To be poor, it means you have slammed too many doors. All the doors God wants to use to bless you. You have slammed them. It's one of the trademark of poor people. Bad with human beings. Bad relationship. Check any real poor person. He has more people he's quarreling with than more that he's friends with. And he has the worst friends. He has, he has quarreled with the good people in his life. And he's, he's entertaining the useless ones that are more useless than him. Check any broke person. Very poor and broke person. They are poor relationship. Elijah was so not good relationship that he was depending on brook of water and raving, raving. No human being could be sent to him except bed. The worst bed, self. Raven is one of the worst beds possible. The stingiest bed. That's the one they could send to him. And of course, bed, after a while, he would tire. They said the bed stopped bringing the food, the water dried. That's the only time Elijah agreed to talk to a human being. But see, Elisha, he understood the power of relationships. He said he was passing through a town, greeting people, relating with people, saying, God bless you, I'm just passing by. So I should greet everybody. And one woman noticed, this man of God is always passing here. So let's build something for him. So that whenever he's passing, we say, he's so friendly. He's so friendly. So they, they built a corner of their house where Elisha will be staying. 
And Elisha was staying there every time he passed. If it's Elijah, he'll go to cave. He'll go to cave. Because he doesn't want to talk to people. He'll go to cave. But Elisha was staying there every time. And after so many times of staying there, Elisha said, well, let's bless this woman. She has been good to us. And the statements Elisha made shook me and shocked me. It shook me and shocked me. Do you know what Elisha said to the woman? He said, he told Gazi, go and ask the woman what we can do for her. He said, should we speak to the governor for you or the commander of the army? Ah, ah. If it's Elijah, you know Elijah will not say that. Elijah, come let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me spit on you a bit. Elijah will go straight to prayer. But Elisha was so relational that even as a man of God and somebody in ministry, he had connections in politics. Listen very carefully, all business people. You cannot afford to not be involved or interested in politics. I don't want to mention his name, but you know one of the richest men in Nigeria, no matter who wins, his business is winning. I don't want to mention his name. You know him, Abi? He settled every candidate. All candidates are his candidates. So no matter who wins, they will support his business. They all lined up to dedicate his, his new something he opened. You know the guy? I don't want to mention his name. <laughs> if you are in business, you are in politics. You just don't know. You just don't know. If I knew this long ago, when I started church, I would have been going to all the local government office. If I knew. I admit you, I learned this one late. This is Elisha. I can't be more anointed than Elisha. But he knew the governor, sir. Personally. For him to, look, look at it now. He said, say unto her, behold, that has been careful for us, all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Say, wouldest thou be spoken, would thou be speaking, spoken for, uh, King James is tired. Basically, should I speak for the king or to the captain of the, the captain of the army? Elisha knew the king and he also knew the chief of army staff. There's a message I'm preaching about in my, my pastor's church about the seven powers, the seven powers that exist. And I don't mean Citadel and Abodish, uh, 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 Abido Sheka. I don't, that's not what I mean. I mean real power. <laughs> I don't mean Citadel and Abido Sheka and uh, Lafarel. La that nonsense. That's not what I'm talking about. But I, there are seven powers that exist. Political power, financial power, social power. There are seven of them. They are all powerful. So Elisha at least had three covered. Political, military, spiritual. He was spiritual. Power. Because this is the only prayer can solve truly. But he had military power. Military power. <laughs> this military power, you know, people think it's only in Nigeria. My friend was telling me that even in places like US, if a veteran, ex soldier, they respect you. You have discount for house, discount for anything you want to car, anything you want to buy, there's discount. If you park in the wrong place and there's veteran or army sticker on your car, even abroad, the police, they will leave you. This is why you are suffering for the country. Military power is power anywhere in the world. So Elisha said, ah, I thought he's a prophet. He's just beginning to prophesy that. Mm, mm, mm. Shanta, ba, 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 ba. Don't say the Lord. No. He said, can I talk to the king? Do you need something from the king? Should I call Asso Rock? All business people, even career people, find out the local government chairman where your business is. Go and pay me a courtesy visit. Carry bag of rice, carry chicken, life or dead. Go and visit. Anyone that enters, greet them. Greet them. One of my friends told me, he's in the U.S. He told me that when he got to town, he learned this thing. That he, he contacted the chief of police of his city. In the U.S., not in Nigeria. U.S., chief of police. And abroad, they are very, they, 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 they are, they're happy when people even come and greet them because nobody comes to greet them. He went and introduced himself, collected the guy's number, became friends with the guy, casually. He said, some months after, one of his boys that is uh, technically illegal, technically, if you know what I'm saying, drove a car, and the guy had fake license. Drove a car in the U.S., and police stopped him. and said, let's see your license. And they found the license was fake. And of course, they detained him, locked him up. <laughs> this is my friend, called chief of police of his city. Hey, Hello. Say hi, say, yo, one of my boys just drove a car, you know, he had a fake license on him, so and so, and he was arrested. I said, the chief of police asked him, so what do you want me to do? He said, I want them, I want them to let him go. He said, okay, I'll let him go, but make sure he never drives in this city again. In America, chief of police, they, they released the boy. 
Imagine if he never went to greet the guy. If he just came and started prophesying, mm, oh, shana, blah, 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 blah. He, he will sleep in jail. He will sleep in jail. So don't, don't, be, don't, be, don't be ignorant. If you are a business, go and greet everybody. In some cases, it's the area boys you will greet because they have more power than the boy. The, <laughs> <laughs> the police, I don't know where we make me and Gideon and some people were driving. We saw uh, a police standing still. Area boys were directing traffic. Police was <laughs> being directed. The area boys were not controlling the traffic. Sometimes they have more power than the police. <laughs> so you greet everybody, sir. Be in good terms, everybody. Elisha said, Can I talk to the king on your behalf or the chief of army staff? Elisha was relational. Elijah didn't like people, he caused fire to burn them every time. Somebody get what I'm saying? So there's an Elisha model and there's an Elijah model of prosperity. Elijah believed in financial miracle. Elisha believed in financial prosperity. One is continuous. The other one is one of... What am I saying? The soul of the diligence. So put in the work. In summary, put in the work. Put in the work. Don't go and ask your boss for a raise. Never. Instead, ask him what you can do to make his life easier. Did you get what I said? Don't write your boss and say, we need to increase our salary. Things are tough. No, 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 no. Your boss, is that, your boss is not, did he open the business to make your life easy? So instead, ask him, sir, is there anything that is in your heart that we've not done? Ask him that, is there anything I'm doing? How do, how do you rate my work? Are there things I should be doing that I'm not yet doing well? Are there things that you would have me do that I'm not yet doing? Do you have more work for me? That's how to get a raise. Your boss will start noticing you that you're among those that have sense in this office. Don't join people that gather and criticize the boss, criticize the company. They will never rise. Instead, look for how to better the thing. Bring solutions. Whenever in a meeting, speak. Don't keep quiet. Make sure you are noticed. You are there. You have good ideas, oh boy. <laughs> I'm shy. No! No! Excuse me, I think this. Excuse me. Talk, talk, talk. Even if it's a stupid idea, they will notice you are there. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The Bible said the, the, the poor person did not roast, the lazy man did not roast that which he took in hunting. That means he went to hunt, but he couldn't process it in a way that it can reach, can go further. You see, when you kill bushmeat, if you don't process it, it has a lifespan of less than 24 hours. You must sell, and every hour the price reduces. But when you roast it, it becomes a delicacy. It can be sold as pepper soup, as grilled barbecue, as different things. It can last longer. And when you have added value to bush meat, it be, the price also, you have added price to it. When you sell it raw, you sell at the base price. That's why Nigeria is poor. We sell crude oil. People that refine it and bring it to us earn more money, you see. Life always pays you for the value you bring. What value are you bringing? The office they put you, you, are, you left it the same way. Some of you left it worse. There are people I've seen, the way they work, they can never be rich. Except they change their work ethics. They can never, it's not a cause, it's a fact. Because you are a burden and a stress to your boss. There's no time he remembers you that he feels joy, he feels anger. Say, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? <laughs> you are a disturbance to him. How can he think of ever promoting you? How can he think of ever increasing your salary? Do, do you bring joy? Do you just a name bring joy when your boss hears of you or thinks of you? Simple. You can know your financial destiny. I don't have to tell you. If your boss is frustrated when he sees you, when he thinks of you, you can never be rich. It's not a cost because money answers to value being produced. Nobody has dashed me money all my life. It's always about value. If I don't add value, they don't give me anything. That's just how simple it is. What value are you bringing? What are you improving? The gift or skill you have, how are you marketing it? Do you always have to work every time you earn money? Or can you find a way to make that thing be any money before, even when you're not working? It takes thinking. You see, that's why lazy people can't prosper. The soul of the diligent. It's not, it's, the diligent is not only physical work. It's mental work. How you are thinking. Do you know most of the rich countries don't have a lot of natural resources, but they have mental resources. But most of the poor countries have a lot of natural resources, but weak, weak mentally. We, as a whole country, we can't organize ourselves. 200 million people. Still no refinery. <laughs> 200, we can't organize ourselves. No light. We are still, I mean, if you watch news of 30 years ago, it can still pass as the news today. 
No light. And the politicians are promising us the same nonsense they promised us 30 years ago. That there will be light. There will be road. There will be water. There will be house. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Diligent. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The soul. So, a diligent way of thinking. Work hard. There is no free money. There is what? No, that, that, there's no need to envy somebody that has. Work the work. There's much food in the tillage of the poor. Much food is produced by virtue of the ox. When you walk, ah, ask anybody that has traveled with me or done anything with me. I might look gentle, but we walk. We have no opening hours, no closing hours. Walk. When you're not working physically, walk mentally. You are thinking of how to better that thing. And you know the thing about anything, once you are actually working mentally, there's always an opportunity for improvement. There's always, they say the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Whatever you're doing can be improved. Don't beg for money. Improve the thing. Money will come. Don't beg for money. Stop it. Work. No food for lazy man. Keep improving. Ah, I work. That's why I don't, I don't pity people there. You're poor. It doesn't concern me. Go and work. Because I'm working. I'm working too hard. Too hard. For somebody to not use begging and uh, harass me. You can't harass me begging. I'll beg you too. We'll beg ourselves. Go and work. Nobody give you a job. Find something you can do for somebody. Wash people's clothes. Wash people's cars. Think. Think of how to add value to people. There must be a way. Sell product for somebody that has product that you can't sell. There's something you have. Like, that's why Elisha told that woman. That's the same thing I'm telling you. What do you have in your house? Can you sew? Can you sell? Can you talk? Can you cry? Can you sing? There's something you can do, brother. Can you trek? Do you have high energy? You can do things. You, they, there's something you have. There's something you have. And I pray for you today. That God will bless that work of your hands. Even if it's a job you don't like, it doesn't matter. God will bless it. The doors will open for you. Grace will come upon that gift in the mighty name of Jesus. You will end in all currencies. I decree global doors to open for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.